it's really hot outside today so I'm actually in the red 300 D and I've got the AC running full blast and I'm just doing some interior work uh, literally sitting in the car with the garage doors open so what I've done today is I went ahead and some of the corners had come up on the wood you can see I still need to address that one over there uh, so I'm just gluing the corners back down making sure the wood is attached uh, I went ahead and put in our center section here that uh, we re-glued to the backing plate and I actually got the radio back in from Becker there you go they restored it uh, 425 so a few weeks ago um, I got this in so we're going to install this back in the car and uh, get this all connected so let me go ahead and do that and then we'll, uh, we'll we'll test out the radio you can see all the original wiring is still here uh, because the original radio was in the car um, and the issue with it was one of the uh, I think it was the right channel or the left channel was was uh, had static in it so Becker just went ahead and overhauled it and I also had him replace the LCD screen so that looks really really nice this is a perfect condition original radio now so anyway let me get this back in the car and we'll test it out turn this thing on and let's make sure our antenna goes up perfect that works absolutely perfect let's try to fade oh beautiful I know you guys probably can't hear the uh, fading but that also works perfect fantastic so let's check our antenna now all right let's see what we got here okay good the antenna is fully extended so let's go ahead and turn off the radio make sure it retracts oh, perfect that antenna is in excellent condition that's great and I also got a new a new grommet on there because they're always rotted off and I want to go ahead and see if it goes up half mast so let's turn it on Okay, good. So, see, it only went up a little bit because it wasn't set to full extension. So, I want to check the manual control now. Let's run it up for a couple of seconds. There we go. Now we're about half antenna mast. And then let's go ahead and tell it to go up the rest of the way. All right. Beautiful. Perfect working antenna. All right, now I'm just going to uh, get back in here and enjoy this air conditioner. Uh, it's probably like 90 degrees outside right now in Georgia in this AC. I just redid the AC and it's ice cold and it feels good. So I'm just going to do interior work today instead of uh, going out and doing suspension work. That can wait till the night time. Anyway, I'm going to get the ashtray reassembled, and uh, you know what I'm actually going to do too is I want to replace, see where the uh, window icon has worn off on the button? I want to go ahead and replace that, and uh, actually I don't think I need to refinish that wood. I need to clean out some rocks in there. Let's see. Oh good. Our mirror control still works. You barely see the mirror moving over there. Fantastic. Uh, I got to clean out. So I'm probably going to take this out and I don't know if I'm going to refinish it or not yet. It actually looks pretty dang good. Just need to clean it up. Looks like we got a little crack right there and it looks like there's something right there but it's so subtle. This might be one that I want to leave alone. So anyway, let me get the ashtray uh, reassembled and I'll show you what it looks like put back together. Okay, so today I'm detailing the 84 
300D, I mean the car uh, washed and cleaned up. We buffed and uh, buffed the paint and polished it and it just came out absolutely fantastic. That's the original paint. And uh, I've got all the carpets out and I'm currently detailing. Uh, you can see how clean it is. Uh, need to vacuum a little bit behind the pedal right there. See how clean it is down here. Also over in the passenger footwell. Everything is super clean. This car was definitely cared for. Let's look in the back. I vacuumed out back here. See all the cover plastic covers are intact that cover up the vacuum lines. The original zip ties are in place and I'm a penny richer now. I need to get that penny out of there. Um, so see, I need to vacuum a little bit back here, but overall fantastic condition. And I'm done detailing and cleaning the MB Techs. Look how good that came out. I mean, there's barely, there is literally no fade. Normally you have a little bit of pink amine. I mean, there might be a slight. It's, it's fantastic. The condition of this car is incredible. And uh, I've decided I'm going to replace the switches, but I'm not going to refinish that wood. Even though there's a little crack here. And there's another one. Yeah, there's the other one right there. Um, it's just, it's original, you know, so I don't want to, uh, and of course I, I want to clean there behind the button. So I'll take this out and just clean it up and replace the switch uh, switches so we have the icons back on there. But uh, I don't want to refinish it because it's original and it's so nice. And uh, here's the carpets. There were a bunch of extra floor mats in the trunk. Here's the original carpet, so I want to shampoo these real good. Um, you can tell, you know, these are passenger and back seat and the driver. There's where all the wear is. So I want to scrub that out real good. We're going to do that, uh, do that next here. Here's the passenger side. See, it doesn't look too bad, but watch when we're done with it. All right, guys, I'll show you when we're done. All right, guys, we've got the center console out of the car. Uh, main reason, eh, well, first, I'm looking at it. Um, I don't think I'm going to refinish this because there is one very small crack right there. But, I mean, that is beautiful, original condition. Oh, looks like there's one right there, too. But they're so... I don't even know if you can see it on camera. It's so subtle. There you go, right there. 
you see it right there? It's so subtle that uh, I'm not going to refinish this because this is a beautiful original piece. Um, so, but what I do want to do is replace the uh, top of the window switch where the logo is gone. And that just simply comes out of there. And let's take a look back here. I have like 20 window switches. I want to find a uh, an original one. Let's see. Oh, yeah. That's an original one right there. You can tell the original ones because they click differently than the aftermarket. Bam. That's the original one. God, I might just want to put this one in the car. And also, I want to clean out the gunk that had fallen in the crevice around the rear view or the side mirror switch. So I'm going to spray some deox down in there and get that cleaned out. And other than that, that's all I wanted to do. So let me get that deox. There we go. Let's just... Ah, there we go. Very nice. All right. Let me get my little brush and clean that up a little bit. This is like a little fan brush. It's cool. It gets you can put it down there and it like gets down underneath the switch. I found these at like uh, Harbor Freight. But it gets like underneath. See, you can here check this out. It's shaped like this wide triangle fan and you can stick it in there and then it bends and goes up under the switch and you can clean around it. Isn't that cool? I just kind of lucked into that. Um, all right, now I'm going to blow this out with some compressed air and we're ready to put these back in the car. All right, I just cleaned that out with some compressed air and let's just wipe off. Yeah, that looks really good. I'm not, I'm definitely not refinishing that. And now our switch looks way better now that it's all cleaned out. There's that, there you go. There's those couple of cracks. But we're going to leave that. It's, uh adds character right i mean sure i could refinish it and make it perfect but it only gets to be original once you know so i'm gonna leave it original let's go uh test these switches in the car all right let's hook this guy up see if the back window is not rolling up because there was a short in the switch so let's see what this one does there we go all right so all these switches are working oh let me try the front one beautiful okay so let's get these unplugged and back into our center console and then reinstall the center console and they just easily snap in there such a great great design there we go got them back in there now Look how beautiful it is under there. That thing isn't broken. Everything's in good shape. Now for the tricky part. Got to get all these reconnected. Down through the hole. Ah, bam. Went right in there. Mm. Perfect. All right, let's test everything before I hook it back up. Uh, I gotta test the fader. All right, and the mirror. Beautiful. That is back together, you guys. So now let's get the, uh, let's get, let's see, where is our cigarette lighter control? There it is. Ugh. All right. 
we want to stick the cigarette lighter power back on here. There we go. And place that guy back in there. I'm really going to miss this car. This is the car I drove back from Reno all the way over like an 8,000 foot pass through Wyoming, back across country, back to Atlanta. And it was such an awesome trip. And uh, this car was just flawless the whole way. And just a great experience, you know. And I'm kind of, I kind of get emotionally attached to some of these cars that, uh, that I have trips like that in, and it's uh, it's hard to let them go. But uh, I have to let them go, or I go out of business. Bam! That went back together beautifully. Let me get the camera uh, over here, and I'll show you what we uh, what it looks like with all the correct new switches with the labels. All right, guys, there she is. See how the new switches make such a big difference? And that center wood looks really, really good. Like I said, the crack, the couple of small cracks in there are so subtle. And this uh, this car is fantastic. What's the mileage there? 87,568. So when we got that back together, let's... Uh, Let's see. Next thing I want to do is lubricate all of the uh, throttle linkage. I haven't done that yet. All right. Next thing we want to do is lubricate all of this throttle linkage because I don't think it's been lubricated in decades. Uh, it feels a little stiff. So I'm just going to start popping these guys off of here. All right, guys, there's really not much to this. You just drop some uh, automatic transmission fluid on all the little ball pivots. And it doesn't matter if you do it all over the engine. You just want to get it all over everything. And this will lubricate things up real well. And it makes a difference. Bowden cable off. There we go. Now, actually, that's moving good. I think uh, the hang up I'm feeling is right in here, that little pin. So, I mean, this little roller back here. Let me put a little lubrication on that. Oh wow, what a difference. That feels so much better. It's amazing what that little lubrication can do. Get some up under there, up under there. And let's get our Bowden cable reattached. Beautiful. That is fantastic. Much better. I think we are pretty damn close to being done with this car. This car is really all about detailing, uh, you know, servicing some small items, window switches, AC, thermostat, um, all the stuff we mentioned in the other video, lubricating the throttle linkage. But uh, yeah. This car is pretty much done. Let me shut the hood and give you guys a shot of this thing. Anyway, look at that beautiful engine. I mean, this is outstanding. 87,000 miles. It just cleaned up immaculate. We got new filters, new brake fluid, new oil, new, uh, 
uh, refill the radiator. You can see we got the correct Mercedes coolant in there, so you can't see it. That's because it's almost the same color as the reservoir. Uh, transmission fluid, power steering. Yeah, we've done everything. Rear differential. This thing is fully serviced and fully detailed. Look at this car. Freaking awesome. I know I'm in the lift, uh, in the shop, and the lifts are blocking everything. But that's the original paint, you guys. Look inside this thing. Came out absolutely fantastic. Look at that dash. Oh, I gotta put the floor mats back in. I just vacuumed the floor mats. They're outside drying because they're a little damp now. Look at that. Fantastic. Yeah, uh, it's gonna suck to let this one go. This is a super nice car. But it is what it is. Oh, watch how good the doors shut. See, it still had those little tabs intact. They hadn't broken off on this car. Check this out. So awesome. All right, guys, I think I may have showed this in previous videos, but on a lot of these cars, on the driver's side, sometimes on the passenger side, you'll have these uh, tears in the B-pillar uh, piping. See, there's, there's piping that runs down the B-pillar, and it, it always gets wear marks and gets torn. So... <clears throat> Those are actually just sticky tape. So this one's actually good here. But what you can see, I'm gonna see if I can lower the camera some. There you go. So what you can see is there's tape. This is tape on the back of some like felt or whatever that material is, the wind lace. And there's the piping. So basically you remove the B-pillar seatbelt cover. Just take your two screws out right there and remove the bottom trim. And this slides out. <clears throat> and then, let's see if I can get in here and open this door enough. Peel this stuff off. See? I'm just peeling it off. It's just double-sided tape. I mean, it's very sticky, but let's get it all the way down here. There we go, it goes all the way down to the uh, seal trim piece right there. So we just peel it off and it'll pull out from underneath there. Come on, there we go. So we got that piece out. Now, let me go get the replacement piece. All right, here is the replacement piece. See, it has the sticky tape. You can you peel off the back here. There you go. See, it's sticky underneath there. I'm not going to peel it off yet. Um, and then it just attaches on the back side of the B-pillar. And you just attach it to get your piping right up there next to it. So to start it, basically you want to stick the very tip of it right in the wind lace right up here see how i'm just let's see there we go you see how the tip of it you just tuck it into the wind lace it it just barely goes into there and that's your starting point right like that so um so i'm just going to go ahead and start peeling just a little bit you don't want it to make contact and and you know you don't want to touch it down until you're absolutely sure it's in the right place all right there we go i just tucked it up into the uh, wind lace and there we go see i got it started and now hopefully you guys can see this peel it off and as i peel I want to make sure I line up the piping right on the seam. Here we go. Want the piping to stick right there on the seam, and then you press down on the back. And then it's stuck on there for another 30 years.
There we go. There you go. See, I've done down to here. Here it kind of, you just do a little bit at a time. Because you're going to curve right here with the door. There we go. There you go. See how that looks, guys? It's factory original. And this is a uh, new old stock stuff here. Hopefully you guys can see my big ass head's not in the way. There we go. When you get near the bottom, we'll probably cut a little bit off and just tuck it up underneath there. I don't know how to record this without me being in the way. There we go. All right, and right here at the bottom, you sometimes want to pry this guy off. Let's see, these things just pop off here. There we go. And we're going to stick it up under there. There we go. We'll tuck it up under there as we peel off our last little bit. Here we go. Boom. <clears throat> there you go, guys. All right, there you go, guys. That is how you redo the B-pillar piping. All the way down. And it tucks right underneath the tail there. And up top, it just tucks in to the wind lace. And that's how you do it. Let me step back so you guys can see that better. There we go. See? Looks fantastic. And that makes a huge difference. Because normally, you know, if you have a rip there, that's like you open the door and that's the first thing your eye sees is, oh, there's a big rip in the wind lace or in the, in the B-pillar piping. So now we just have to stick back on. this uh, cover right here. See if I can do this one hand and hold the camera. So literally, you see there's a, a notch right there. There is a notch right there. So you just come up there. There we go. And it just pushed right into the notch. I mean, it wants to go back where it's supposed to, you know. And then uh, you reattach your uh, bottom cover. I can't do this with one hand and I can't mount the camera in the car, guys. So I'm gonna need to uh, stop recording, but I'll show you when it's put back together. And there we go, guys. Look at that. Let's reattach there. And there's that beautiful new piping. That's how you put it on there. Factory original. Anyway, let's get these floor mats back in here. It's Orient Red Week here at Woods and Barclay. There's an Orient Red Wagon. There's an Orient Red 240D. And there's an Orient Red 300D. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll do the test drive and the walk around video um, in the next uh, couple of videos I'll release. And, and that's it for this car. Take care. We'll see you next time.